everyone, what's going on? I've got a special guest here for the next couple of days. I've got Gus that's made the trip down from Durban, and I'm the official Herb Uber. So we're just stopping at a few local sites here just around Cape Town. Gus has got a lot of lifers to get, so we're just going off to some common stuff today. We're going to get flipping some logs and cover, and hopefully turn up some goods. We just turned up in this little mole heap. Gus's first lifer of the Cape Town trip. Let's see how these bikies. Oh, if he doesn't lose it or break its tail. Mm -hmm. It actually looks like it has a nice full tail. A uh, little bit of a regrown. But yeah, Scalotti's bikies. Common here in the Cape. Nothing special, but we just got another little herp. This is a juvenile Cape skink. Gus just flipped it under this log. But when he flipped the log, I did see. Just flip it your way. I just see a load of little frogs hopping around. <laughs> These are baby clicking stream frogs. Fungulovis grey out. We see tons of these, so they can just eat back. Yeah, we just got that Scalotes. We just got Gus another lifer. The Cape Legless Skink. Pontius Meliagris. Just sheltering under this little log here. But everything else is pretty wet. So get some pictures of this dude and we'll let him go. We just got Gus's third lifer for the afternoon. Right after that, a contest. Cape down to it. Nice big female for adult size. Don't get much bigger than that. Take that little emerald green eye. Good looking animal. Turn it over a little bit. Let's check the belly. You can see they got a sort of plain little belly. The males have got a little window at the bottom. It's actually got a little nice vertebral stripe on it. So that's cool. I think we should get some photos now while we've got some good substrate and we'll see what else we can. But we are cleaning it up here on the common today. Nice. Gus is learning his lessons the hard way. Cape Town slug eaters are disgusting. In fact, I just have a look how cool the belly is. It's actually nice and vibrant. Yeah, I just got a late evening flip. Our day is sort of coming to an end. Just flipped it on here, a nice big patch of concrete. Gotta love the Cape Town locals. We got another Cape legless skin. This one's not as vibrant yellow as the other one. But also a small one. Hopefully we can get a larger one and show Gus a bus size one. But he'll enjoy the lifers all the same. So we are rapidly losing light. But Gus just flipped a big brown water snake. Let's see if he can't. Let's hope he doesn't lose it. Have you got it there? Is that another one or was it tail? No, it's that one. He's battling to get it out here. That is a chunky sized brown water snake. You don't often see big ones at this locality. And it's right here by the stream. It actually looks like it probably is carrying eggs. That's a good looking snake. You can see the belly. Yeah, oh, nice, typical pale yellow orange. Brown water snake. First snake of the day. Probably the last snake of the day at this time. So you're rapidly losing light, but. Not a bad start. All right, so that was a successful little afternoon after work stop. We got Scalotes bikies, Contius meliagris, a brown water snake, common slug eater, a Cape sand toad, King stream frogs, and a Cape skink. But that's going to be it for tonight, and we're going to head out again tomorrow. So we'll catch you when we're there. So we back out here with. Gus and we're busy flipping some trash and logs. Have a look at that. That is a very large Cape Rain Frog, Breviceps gibosus. Let's, you can see from all the rain this week how wet everything is. I'll take this one out. Have a look at this. Iconic little grumpy face. You can just get an idea of the size just from being in my hand. Doesn't get much better than a good old hair brain frog. We're just gonna photograph this guy real quick and we'll put him back. So we just finished photographing this guy. He can go back into his burrow. You can see he'll fit pretty neatly there. And we'll gently just put his log back and he can carry on doing his frog things. So this is just a closer look at this gorgeous Cape brain frog. As you can see from this video, they tend to not walk, hop or jump at all. 
and they just sit here looking like the saddest frogs on earth. We're just gonna put this guy back and see if we can't turn up anymore. So one log away from that big brevy sips we just photographed, I just went and got him again so we can show you. We got two absolute monster, monsters, Cape brain frog. One on the right is quite a bit bigger. So you can see just how dark their derpy little eyes are. Love a good rain frog. But yeah, this guy can go back under his log. This one can go back under his hole. And we're gonna go carry on. So Gus doesn't even have to flip stuff when he's finding things. It's a little sluggy. It's actually a really nice sort of reddish one. But you see it's sort of in that little hole. They stink. We've seen a lot of them. We're not gonna bother this guy. He can just stay in there. <laughs> Where was he? Just, just like that. Yeah, he can stay there. Let's go. We just flipped the world's biggest log. And we got a nice big adult leopard. Dangerous species. This is a big female. She's quite skinny, so the possibility is that she's already bred the stream just to our right there. See good looking toads. Gus is life a western leopard. Mm -hmm. Nice crimson markings on the back. Pretty cool. We'll snap a few photos of this. The light is rapidly fading on us, so get a few photos. Let it go back under its giant log. And then we're gonna head to the next spot. So we're just out here looking for some black cac black cacos and I just got this tiny little sleeping bradypodium. This is the Cape Dwarf Chameleon. Let's see if I can focus a bit better for you guys. There's just a really young one sitting here on the rest chairs. See his eyes open, he's awake. But if I am just quiet for a second, have a look at that sunset. You can hear the black cacos calling in the distance. We'll see if we can't turn up a couple of them now. We, you know, we obviously got to get the supplies. So we just got to our first site and I hadn't even recorded the intro yet. And we got a double flip here in the mounds. We've got Scalotes. I do believe this is single toe. So this is Scalotes granovi. You can have a look at them there. And right over there, we've got Breviceps Namaquensis. He's just a little guy. Can't even see where his face is. Ah, oh, there is. Here's his face. So yeah, we're going to be walking through some of these mole heaps while it's still nice and cool. With the Scalotes scoffle. So two species on the board. And... We're gonna see what we get up with. Gus has got a lot of lifers to see here today, so we're gonna make good work of the spot. So, this is just at the spot where we got the rain frog and brevi slips. And right there is an angular tortoise. He's just busy basking in a bit of the morning light here. It's still relatively cool. But yeah, nice to get another species on the board so quickly. So, we haven't even been at the site for, I don't know, five minutes. Please don't scream. And I just picked up a massive Namaka rain frog. This is Breviceps namaquensis. See just how beautiful it is. These eyes. This is an exceptionally large specimen. Um, beautiful one, nice and yellow. And yeah, we are hitting it hard and fast this morning. The light is atrocious. But really getting some good species. And just moving between spots, here's another little angular tortoise. This guy's still obviously a bit cold, it hasn't quite heated up in the early morning sun. These tortoises are really common and they usually sleep quite easily, so he'll just cruise around, he'll find the nearest bush, wait in there till we're gone, and he'll probably hop out again. And since Gus is the new guy on site here, he gets the 
pretty much gross job of flipping all this discarded he's a bunch of old clothes and old blankets usually a really good spot for the little cook here although we haven't bumped into any yet which is quite surprising um, a couple of little scorpions and other little random things but no cook here so i hope you'll turn up those i just need to say if you're not a fan of brain fogs skip the next part i just double flipped two of these really good looking little rain fogs there's just a tiny little one and right next to him in the mall he was pretty much a medium sized one see how beautiful they are as they open their eyes uh, nice pale dark colors yeah we're gonna photograph these and just pop back in the mall hope. so once i dusted all that sand off a creepy caterpillar on the grass stem there this rain fog's a lot darker than the larger one we flipped a little bit earlier but it's still a really unique, still a really beautiful looking specimen. Uh, I'm not going to keep them out here for too much longer as the rain folks like to get back to the sand. So I'm just going to pop them back here at the base of this mole heap. Just cover them with a bit of sand so he doesn't dry out and he'll just flow into the soil. Well, Gus just got pretty much our best flip. Well, bless, scratch around the mole heaps that we're going to get today. This is Scalotis Kasnari. Kazna's dwarf firing skin. See the beautiful dark eye bands and the tiny little vestigial limbs in the rear there. Just, just two limbs with two large toes. These are one of the biggest members of the genus of Scalotes and one of my favorite genus of lizards in general. He was just scratching around here in this mall heap where he found him and right next to it was actually the much smaller Scalotes Grenobi. So we'll get pictures of these guys. And I'll show you what happens when you pop them back in the sand. The closer look at that, Scalodes Grenovi. See, it's just starting to burrow the little pointy head there. But as you sort of disturb them, they just go into full freak out mode, usually. And he'll just slink away into the soil and he'll be gone. And there he goes, probably gonna go down that little hole. So the site does not have a lot of concrete, so I'm recording every... Whoa! There we go, we finally got something under the concrete. Um, this is a spotted harlequin snake. They are a venomous species, a big strong kind of member of the Lapid family. Although they're not particularly dangerous, um, people have and do get quite negative reactions to the bites, but generally they've got a very small cave and they don't readily bite people, so it's not something to worry about. So here's a look at that spotted harlequin snake. We just cleaned all that loose sand off it, all the damp sand. These snakes are absolutely ridiculously looking. That orange band running down the black. The pale yellow with the black bands. Ridiculous. They just really jerky snakes. They move in these really uncontrollable sort of jerky fashions. They've got a tiny little head um, and like I said earlier they prey mainly on the fossorial limbless lizards, the scalotes and the contus which we have found in absolute numbers here today. Let's see if we can just get a better look at that head pattern. Actually has a suspect looking pattern on its head. But let's see now if we get a bit of over overview. I'm trying to photograph it but it's been proving really difficult. Let's give it a couple more goes and then we're probably gonna head off to a new spot. This Holocon snake was uncooperative as usual as they usually are, but just gonna release him under his piece of concrete. There you go, he'll go off and eat some scalodes, I'm sure. So have a look at this. This is Ochia incognito, the incognito pygmy gecko. It is one of the smallest species of geckos that we get here in South Africa. You can see this guy's absolutely tiny. It was just under some debris under this big old yellow bush. We're pretty much done at the site now. I'm just going to take a quick walk, photograph some tortoises, and we're going to move on to our second spot for the day. 
There's an angular forest. I don't know if he's in there, but he's just... Oh, he is in there. He's just not coming out of his shell. What the heck's too gross. I'm gonna pop him in the shade. I don't know what he's doing out here in the sun. It's no place for his daughters to be. So, you know when you spend the whole day hyping up a species and you get it within the first 20 seconds of being at a site? So this is the armadillo girdle lizard, Ouroboros cataphractus. And this is the highlight of the trip, the highlight of the day. So anything else from here is gravy. So we'll just take a little close look at this lizard and you can see just how armored they are. Oh, and they do the classic Ouroboros where they bite the tail. Um, the main reason behind this is they protect their soft belly. It's the only vulnerable part of the lizard just to protect them against predation. But this isn't hurting the animal at all. It's their secondary level of defense other than their spiky armor. So sometimes the animals do this and they just don't let go biting their tails. We just put them back in the crevice and carry on looking for some more. So we've got another armadillo lizard over here. And I don't know if you can see, but in there, in these crevices here, there's a couple more. There's another one there. Just in these few little crevices here, there's probably about 30. It's all about knowing the correct habitat. And you can see beautiful spots for these lizards to be barking. We've got a large woodman's gecko just by the rear of it, just by the back of it. So I'm just be very gentle because they bite and I do not want to get bitten by one. <laughs> it's a little bit of a squeak. And there we have it. Beautiful adult Bibbon's gecko. Andrachis Bibbonar. Plus will be stoked. He hasn't seen a, a big one. We've got some little ones just now. Boom. And he's got beautiful dorsal markings. This time of the year, you can see all the spring flowers are out. Oh, nice addition for the day strip. Beautiful geckos, even though they are really common. I'll get some pictures. We can... So I was just touching cracks, and Gus has yeeted that he got something sick. Yo, a sick second harlequin of the day. That's so rad. Let's get him to calm down, and we'll get a better look at him. So here's just a better look at this beautiful spotted harlequin snake just while it has calmed down a little bit. You can see it's a much chunkier animal than the one we saw a little bit earlier at the previous site. Um, I actually think the snake may be gravid. It's unusually heavy towards the last sort of two thirds of the body. Um, but yeah, the snake is absolutely beautiful. It's really relaxing quite nicely. But I managed to get a couple of photographs that I'm happy with. So we're just going to eat this guy off and we're just going to go back under the rock that Gus just flipped him in. Uh, again, I'm torching cracks. Gus has got something sick. Holy crap. It's a spotted rock snake. They've just changed the genus to become monotypic, I suppose. Yeah, oh, these things are so nice. This is such a beautiful specimen too. Typical West Coast sort of coloration. And I've never seen these spotted rock snake at this site either. So what rock was it under? Which is that one under all that stuff? We're busy flipping trying to find scolotes. And we're just turning up a harlequin and now Gus's very next find was this insane spotted rock snake. Too sick. We'll have a decent look at him and then we'll get some photos. So here's that spotted rock snake that Gus flipped just under a small rock. You can see they're really different from some of the other ones we've seen in the videos. But he's not sticking around for much, so we're just going to let him crawl back under his rock and we're going to carry on. See if we can't turn up a couple of scalodes or something like that. We just got our third species of scalodes for the day. This is scalodes kafer. The Cape Dwarf Growing Skink. You can see these are really good looking little skinks. I'll put them on here, you'll see. They just zoot around. 
but it's nobody's business. Beautiful blue tails on them. We snapped a couple of photographs, but we're not going to worry about it. So we just picked up a gorgeous armadillo lizard. And I'll just flip this one a little rock while looking for some of the scalates. You can see this one is quite grey in colour compared to the other one. And again, it's biting its tail. It just wants to sort of cover its guards. So Gus just flipped this really good looking armadillo girdle lizard, much smaller than some of the other ones we've seen. Um, unfortunately these guys are highly collected and trafficked across South Africa, particularly into the US and Europe. So if you ever see these guys for sale, they'll probably illegally collect it from here. Just spotted something dead on the side of the road. It's probably a mole snake, but we're gonna just check it out quickly. I can smell it. Yeah, it's just a mole snake. But it's very well dead. Stinks. But that is going to be much in the video. Thanks so much for watching. I will catch you on the next one.